The last transformation that we're going to be dealing with is called dilations. Now we've dealt with three of them, reflections, translations, and rotations. Those three are known as isometries or congruence transformations. Dilations are a little bit different. There's not a whole lot to dilations. They're fairly simple. There is a whole lot of words that you need to know and um, that you need to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this and then I'm just going to let it sit there for about uh, 30 seconds so you can get a good concept of it. And we're going to have two boards full of rules, definitions and rules, and then we're going to do some examples using those definitions and rules. Dilations. A dilation is a transformation that applies a scale factor R from a center point to all points of a pre-image and creates a smaller, larger, or congruent image. Now, it's underlined some very important parts. Transformation that applies a scale factor, and we're going to call that R, from a center point. So here's another translation that requires a fixed point of some sort to all points of a pre-image and creates a smaller, larger, or yes, even a congruent image. Okay? All of those are important. You have to have a scale factor, you have to have a center point, and your image is either going to be smaller, larger, or congruent. Dilations may change the size of a pre-image, but will not change the shape. Okay? May change the size, but not the shape. Dilations preserve the following properties. They preserve the betweenness of points. Point that's between two other points is still going to be between those two points. They preserve collinearity. Points on a segment are still going to be on that segment in that same order. They preserve angle measurement. Why? Because they preserve shape. Angles determine shape. Therefore, since shape is preserved, angle measurement is preserved. They also preserve orientation. The order of the points. If I go left around the pre-image, if I go to the right around the pre-image, then guess what? I can go right around the image and have the same order of points. If I go left around the pre-image, I can go left around the image and have the same order of points. Now, what is not maintained or may not be maintained? The distance measures. That's your size. Dilations are known as similarity transformations, where similar means same shape but not same size. The symbol, this little squiggly mark, means similar. Now where have you seen that squiggly mark before? Yeah, we've seen it over an equal sign, and when it's over an equal sign it means congruent. When it's by itself, it means similar. It means same shape. If you put an equal sign with it, it means same shape, same size. These are the facts and the definitions and the vocabulary that you need in order to do dilations. Now we need to talk about rules for the scale factor, which is the most important point or piece of the dilation. Scale factor. A lowercase r is used as a symbol for the scale factor. So let's here's the rules using that lowercase r. If the absolute value of r is greater than 1, then the dilation is an enlargement. Okay? If the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1, then the dilation is a reduction. Simply says, wow, if R is basically less than 1, okay, then the dilation is a reduction. If the absolute value of R is equal to 1, then the dilation is a congruence transformation 
or isometry. Can a dilation be an isometry? Yes. If the absolute value of R is equal to 1. Now, if R is less than 0, then the image is created on the opposite side of the center point from the pre-image. What? Simply means that we're going to create the image. If R is negative, then we're going to create the image on the opposite side of the center point from the pre-image. These rules of R are very important. You need to know them and be able to use them in order to adequately and um, correctly implement dilations. Now let's do some sample dilations. We'll do an enlargement, we'll do a reduction, and then we'll do a congruence combined with an opposite. Okay? Show you what that looks like. So the congruence and the opposite will be together. So we have an enlargement. That means that R, scale factor, absolute value of R, is greater than 1. So let's pick R equals 2. So we're looking at R equals 2. What we've done is we have our point, our center point, P. We have a triangle, ABC, okay? And what I've done is I've simply drawn lines from the point, the center point, through each one of the points on the figure and out. Now, what I've done is I've measured from P to C. So segment CP, and then I've doubled that, okay? So this over here is going to be my new, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to be my new C, or C prime. Okay? C prime. And then I've done the same thing with B. I've measured segment BP, and then doubled it, and it's going to be my new B prime. I've also done the same thing with segment AP. I've doubled that, multiplied it by the scale factor, and this is my new A prime. Now, let's connect the dots and see what it looks like. See if indeed it does look like it's twice as big. Okay, there's that. I'm thinking about using a ruler on a marker board. If you use too much, you'll erase what you've been marking on. Okay, so there's our new figure. What we've got is we've got one whose sides are twice as big as the original pre-image. That's an enlargement. Okay, let's go over here and look at a reduction. Okay, a reduction. A reduction is one in which the absolute value of the scale factor is between 0 and 1. So I picked a, re a scale factor of 1 half. So hopefully what we'll do is we'll produce a triangle that is 1 half the distance on each side of it, as the original LNN. I've got a center point of S. So what I did was I measured the distance between S and N, took half of it, and marked a point. And this point right here will be my new N. Okay, I did the same thing between S and L. I marked the center point, and the center point, why the center? Because it's one half. I mark the point that's halfway, half the distance. This will be my new L. And I did the same thing with SM, segment SM. And I mark the midpoint because I'm going halfway. And this is my new M. So let's connect the points and see what we get. There's my image. Uh, triangle LMN, that should be one half the size on each side, LMN. Now notice I'm going to the left, LMN. Notice LMN to the left. Notice over here, ABC went to the right. ABC maintains orientation. Okay, now let's look at this one over here that uh, is a congruence and then it's also opposite. It looks a little bit different, and let's describe it. Congruence, absolute value of R equals 1, and, and this is a symbol for and, remember from our proofs and from logic, and R is less than 0. 
So what do we got? We got r is equal to negative 1. The negative 1 means is that our image is going to be produced over here opposite okay, the side that the preimage is on. Notice over here our r's are positive and they're on the same side as the preimage. Same side of the center point. Okay? All I did was I measured the same distance. Came from Z across D, same distance over to the opposite side. This is going to be my new Z. Okay? My new Z. This one over here, this point right here, is going to be my new X. And this point right here, it's hard to see up here. Let's get it marked so we can see it. This point right here is going to be my new y. All right? So this point will be my new y. All right? So let's connect them. That should be the same size, approximately the same size, and it will be opposite that. Now, is orientation maintained? X, Y, Z as I go to the left. So I started sitting here, X, Y, Z, whoa, as I go to the right. So that does not maintain orientation, does it? Okay? X, Y, Z does not maintain orientation. So what's going to happen is, X, Y, Z as I go to the left, no, I'm going to the right as I go to the right. X, Y, Z as I turn to the right. Okay? That's right. X, Y, Z as I go to the right. Okay? And X, Y, Z, I start with X, Y, and Z as I go to the right. So, this does maintain orientation. So, all of those properties that we talked about are maintained. There's your examples of an enlargement, a reduction, and a congruence with an opposite thrown in there. Okay? Dilations. One of the simplest transformations, if you know all the points and maintain them, and apply your scale factor appropriately.